What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of History Hyenas. I'm Chris Stefano, a.k.a. Chrissy Fake Leather Jackets. With me, as always, Giannis Pappas, a.k.a. Yanni Y Chromosomes. A.k.a. Yanni 100% clean ass. Giannis, here's the thing. Here's something that I was talking about with Giannis. We just went to, um, it's called Puerto Rico. It's called Puerto Rico Coffee Company, and that's just honestly the name of it. They have really good coffee in the West Village. Um, they uh, they have. <laughs> you had to say that just because fans know. Otherwise, it could have been a Wei Zhang. It could have been a Wei Zhang. Yeah. I'm jo I'm joking. I mean, they do always have an open fire hydrant in the summertime because that's fucking Puerto Rican splish splash. But it's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we go. Yeah, minute. Uh, did we even make it a minute? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I don't have headphones, so yeah. I can't even hear Wei Shan Sheehan. So you're just gonna have to. I'm just gonna. You're have a to... white kid from Queens, and it's just what it is. I was in Denver with Patty Fly Balls and James Debo. Yeah. So understand that it's gonna take. It usually takes about 24 to 48 hours to shake off the Ridgewood. <laughs> so <laughs> there's gonna be a few things I say yeah. that are just wild. Yeah. And it's what it is. Because if your brain was a fire hydrant, and they took the caps off to let the water flow. Yeah. You'd be saying welfare monkey a bunch. I was, yeah, 100%. Because but you know, inside that fire hydrant, there's a lot of thoughts yeah. that when you took and they flew out, the word welfare yeah. would be said a lot. So let me tell you, let me just make one thing crystal fucking clear. When that water flowed, make no mistake, the colors would be red, white, and blue. It's what it is. It's Can we get is. a bunch of Wei Zhang Jings for me saying welfare monkey? Wei Song <laughs> Yeah. Wei Song yeah. yeah. It's what it is, cuz. Because my mom called German snow monkeys. And it's just a 10 it's out of 10 just funny what it thing is. to do. Yeah. But um, what we were talking about was um, I now have been very close friends with Giannis for like five years. Um, and really, really close with him, like, li like neighbors for the past two years. So I know, not only do I know when Giannis's ass is clean versus not clean, but I know the percentage of clean his ass is versus dirty so i could tell right now he's got about a 95 percent clean ass because wow. he didn't witch hazel wow how'd you right. know that because i just know because wow because i could just tell because you could smell like a dog yeah i could smell like a dog i got a keen sense of smell when it comes to yanni p's ass let me just be crystal clear with our toots and yeah. our non-toots right yeah. now with the cackle let me just be crystal clear with the cackle yeah when you wash your ass with bar and soap or to our black friends, washcloth and soap. Yeah. Your ass is only going to be 95% clean. Right. If you want to go 100, you got to witch hazel your asshole. You got to just do it. You got to witch hazel the ass. And I know there's been times where, and I know that, like when Giannis, when his ass gets down to less than 5% clean, I actually have to kick him out of my house. So there was one time where he was in my apartment and his ass was about 4% clean and I had to ask him to kindly leave. I mean, it gets to a point where he just doesn't respect himself, but now he's getting married in two weeks. So every day he's made a commitment to, to his lovely uh, soon-to-be wife that he's going to not eat Pete's for two weeks except on the day of his bachelor party and the night of the rehearsal dinner. So just those two days he'll eat Pete's, and his ass will be clean 95% of the time until the wedding. Because the reason why Scandinavians don't have fumes, I'm going to reveal the reason now. It's not as crazy as what we Here thought. Here we go. <sighs> this, want... is a, this is this is a Yanni truth right now. Yeah, this is a crystal clear Chrissy D. Yeah. Uh, Chrissy Chaos. Yeah. Peanut head, pussy head, pappas moment of truth. Truth. Here it is. I'm going to change the world right now. Here we go. Okay, you ready? Yes. The reason why Scandinavians don't have fumes is not as mysterious. It's not as much a consequence as nature as we've been purporting. Right. The truth is, when you go to Scandinavia, which many people don't get the chance to do because it's so expensive there, it's nuts. Right. But I've been able and privileged to travel there extensively. Thank you, for, of, thank you for acknowledging your privilege. Yeah, my privilege. Your I, white privilege. My thank white privilege. Because I'm white and privileged. I, I was able, through comedy and my privilege, yes. to go there and, and tour for a couple of years. And here's the deal. Yeah. It's not that sexy an answer. We've been making a lot of jokes, but I'm right. going to let the world know what the problem is. Let us know what the truth Why is. Why Americans are, overall have fumes. Why we have a lot of fumes in a lot of other countries, and Scandinavians have no fumes. Yeah. You want to know? Yeah. It's as simple as removable shower heads. Really? That's what it is, because it's not a sexy thing, and we got a lot of mileage out of fumes and non-fumes, and now we have a whole 
thing, a world where fumes means more than just the way your right. your crotch smells. Right. So now I'm going to let the truth be told. The fucking problem in this country is for some reason the shower head is fixed above our head, aimed at our chest and shoulder. Right. Guess what? That's not our problem area right there. Right. And then we're just stuck trying to cup water and throw it into our ass. Right. Like we're at a water well in Ethiopia. Yeah. It's a problem. We need to be able to bring the party straight to the tragedy right here. Yeah. We need to be able to remove the shower head yes, and exactly. shoot it. And shoot it right in your ass. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because when you go to a nice Hyatt yeah. or you go to a nice hotel and they got a nice shower with a removable shower head, how yeah. clean does your ass feel when you take out the gun and squirt it right onto your anus? It feels fucking great, cuz. And I got to be honest with you, every I, I can't remember the last time I haven't bent over and spread my ass cheeks and let the water hit my hole. <laughs> Yeah, you got to do it like you're playing that that water balloon clown mouth game at a state fair. Yeah. You got to try to line your asshole up with one beam of water yeah. to get a direct hit. Because yeah. it's archaic, it's antiquated, yeah. and the Scandinavians are ahead of us in having a clean ass, yeah. global warming, yeah. and fucking single pay health care, and they got hot girls, and it's just KS, so well, it is what it is. is. Zach, give me a it's what it is in German. That's the only what get, that was Swahili. Swahili. Give, give me a, it's it's what it is in German. I want to hear one in German. Yeah, you want to hear one in your native language. Yeah. Es ist genau das, was es ist. Cause yeah, that's the only one you play for me from now on. Did you get a creeper? Yeah. Cause you're. I had I had to use my left arm to keep my right hand down. Here's the truth of the situation. Yeah. First of all, I says please keep doing that because I love the is what it is in different. Give me is what it is, give, in give me what it is one more time in German. I just want to hear it one more time. <laughs> Es ist genau das, was es ist. Yeah! <laughs> Here's the truth of the situation. It hit me like a ton of bricks mm -hmm. when we were getting... That mad dog needs love because his mom's a toot. <laughs> uh, Hebert. <laughs> yeah, that too, cuz. Yeah. Yeah, that too. Yeah, I got you good, right? You caught me. Oh, uh, Hebert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then ISIS came with the perfect timing. Yeah, hey, Bert. Uh, that was like a one-two punch. You guys yeah. both got me. Yeah. Um, yeah, that too. That too. Yeah, yeah that hit me like a ton but of bricks. What else? What'd you find that, out, Gus? It yeah. also hit me like a ton of bricks. Well, we were in the, uh, uh, now it's in my head. Now it's funny in my head. Yeah, because yeah. let's just be honest. We found out some revelations about Mad Dog Hebert. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, Hebert. <laughs> If you guys don't know, if you're new to the podcast and you're just new to the cackle, one of our dearest friends in the world, our third, our third Mike most of the time, James Mad Dog Matter, and also known as Hey Bert because he looks like Bert from Bert and Ernie. Um, we talk about him sometimes, but he he couldn't. He we have to throw him off the podcast because he doesn't know how to yes end and he doesn't know how to play games. And we would make fun of him, calling him Hey Bert. He would get upset. And understand when you when you walk into the world of the history hyenas, it's mostly hyena. Yeah. And if you can't cackle with us, then you gotta go. You're gonna get hazed. You're gonna get your ears chewed off. Your ears are gonna end up looking like a four leaf clover. Yeah. Like a hazed lower ranking fucking male. And a hyena cackle. It's just what it is. So if you want, yeah. So if you um, if you know, and if you want to get, if you if you're liking this podcast and you've listened to a few apps and you're not part of our Patreon, Patreon.com, Patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys, also known as the Matreon, then you're unfortunately a toot. If you want to be a non toot and wake up one day and finally for the first time in your life not just be a dirty prostitute. Like Mad Dog's mom. Like Mad Dog's mom. Then what you have to do is go to patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys and we have a lot more fun and games there and a lot more content because make no mistake, if you're a part of the matriarchy, a part of the cackle and you have your pseudo penis in the air, I will suck it. <laughs> And the truth is we're dangling a couple of nice pseudo penises in yeah. front of the people who are toots right now. Because yeah. make no mistake, I've been getting a lot of DMs. And you know what those DMs have been saying? What? They've been saying, how can I get the Alt-Right Andy episode? How can I get yeah. the Rachel Feinstein episode? Yeah. And it used to be and should have been, how can I get the Ari Shafir episode? Yeah. But now you can just get that for free. Because make no mistake, Zach Isis put that episode ahead of time because he wasn't like he and he wasn't supposed to and I know for a fact he fucking did that because he's a Muslim and he just wanted to stick it to the Jew one more time yeah and he also wants to display to us that if we're gonna be doing two a week he needs more money he needs more money <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. He's like, hey, listen, I appreciate that you're uh, you're doing nice things for me, and you mentioned my name on the podcast, but I'd like I need more money. I need a little bit more money instead uh, of seventy five. I- I'd like maybe a hundred dollars or something because I need more money because I need more finger tattoos. Listen, the deal is, look, if you look, I mess up a lot during the week, but if you want me to mess up twice as many times because you have two episodes, I'm gonna need another twenty five dollars. I need more money. <laughs> Cause yeah. So people been asking me about those episodes. Guess what? What? They've been learning a lot of harsh realities. Because mm-hmm. a lot of people who are non toots non toots props to the non toots have been DMing me going, how come I don't see the Andrew Schultz or Rachel Feinstein uh, guest interviews on yeah. Patreon? Then you, I only have one thing to say to you. You're a fucking toot with fumes. Yeah. And or, that's the reason. Or you're a non toot only at the $5 level. Cause yeah. Guess what? We're screwed in, kids. Yeah, we're fucking screwed in. And if we're going to do an episode with a high-powered Jew, it's going to be for the tens only. It's going to be for the tens only. So make no mistake, you're going to have to reach a little deeper into that pocket (laughs) and pay the history hyena rent because it just got adjusted for inflation. That's what it is, cuz. I'm going to put some locks up my ass right now. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so yeah the interview episodes which there will be when we're done there will always be four in the chamber yeah we should have three and we only need one more but now we need two more and once we get four in rotation you non toots are going to be enjoying it only the non toots the yeah. ten dollar toots will be enjoying those episodes for four weeks and then isis will be releasing the oldest one yeah every week for the for the for the toots so we always give the toots what they yeah. we always give the toots what they what 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 they can't afford right but if but the people who can afford it who want to sit in first class think about being a member of patreon.com slash Bay Ridge boys as sitting in first class You're first class You're you get fir- to see the toots walk by you yeah. and sit in the back because because make no mistake we've talked about this before some neighborhoods have a little turbulence Bay Ridge does not turbulent we got friendly skies so when you're flying through the friendly skies of Bay Ridge and the matriarchy and the History I Ain't podcast, which is a Friendly Skies podcast, you want to be in first class, you want to be on Patreon. If you want to go listen to another podcast and you know it's going to be a little turbulent, then you could sit and coach, no problem. <laughs> but for us, we're first class kind of podcast, so we want to get you the full experience, so you're going to have to go to patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys. Like for today, for free, for the free apps right now, for the non toots because anybody can listen to this right now, we're going to talk about James Armistead Lafayette, who was... Uh, a Revolutionary War spy hero who was black. And because it's Black History Month, we're doing episodes only about prominent black figures in history. So I wanted to try to make a stretch. I want to try to make a stretch and do an episode on Freddie Mercury because he was born in Africa. And Giannis told me that's racist and we can't do it because it's specifically about African Americans. Yeah, you were saying he's African. I'm going, yeah, he's a white kid from South Africa. Yeah. We're doing Black History Month. Doesn't count. We're talking about African Americans. But you picked this episode and it's a good one. And it's a good one. So it's going to be, we're going to give you a lot of fun facts and history and talk wild about James Armistead Lafayette, who was um, handpicked himself by uh, the Marquis de Lafayette, who was the highest ranking French officer in the Revolutionary War, in the Revolutionary War, and General George Washington's right hand man. And it's going to be wild and it's going to be a good app and you're going to like it. If you want to hear more about it, though, and more fun factuals that we keep hidden from the fucking toots, because we don't want toots you know, around our property, because make no mistake, that we're fucking conservatives. We don't want toots <laughs> on our property. We only want them behind closed doors because we don't want to pay taxes on toots. So so you're going to have to go to patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys. And obviously, Wei Shang Xian, we're not conservatives. Even though, Giannis, Wei Shang Xian. even though Giannis is getting more conservative because he's getting older and getting married. <laughs> So he's getting more. He's leaning more to the right. Cause, cause make no most mis- reasonable people are. It's like the new gay thought for liberal people. Yeah, for classical liberals, the new conservative thought is like a forbidden gay yeah, thought. Yeah, can't do it. Yeah. Cause make no. There's mis- a lot of in the closet liberals with yeah. cause conservative thoughts right now. Yeah, because make no mistake, the chances, if you're right, you're probably on the right. That's the truth. <laughs> no, here's the truth. That's and I was going to say this before. Yeah. It hit me like a ton of bricks. Yeah. Uh, what it hit you like a ton of bricks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you get when you came Because your the... shirt is a 10 out of 10 funny, hilarious shirt right now. It looks like somebody's pajama pants. Because I thought it was different and wild, and I just went for it. That's a Chrissy D decision right it there. Is. That it you is. fucking went wild. I mean, we'll post a picture, or you could see on the on the video when we post a video of this podcast on our YouTube. We don't shout out on our YouTube enough. Yeah. What is it? YouTube.com slash. 
His, Bay Ridge Boys. Bay Ridge Boys. YouTube.com slash Bay Ridge Boys. You can get, catch all these episodes up on our YouTube. Yeah, they uh, they go up a little later because yeah. you're an extra toot. If yeah. you're going to the YouTube, yeah. you're a you're toot squared. Yeah, yeah. But you will get to see the full episodes eventually whenever ISIS remembers to put them up. 100%. The new episodes come out about, I would say, two months after release yeah. on Patreon. The yeah. problem is, is you know, Zach ISIS has got a lot, of, a lot of stuff to do. He's got a he's got a studio that he has to upload the stuff on and make, and oh, don't forget, which is a lot of work to begin with, but he's also, you know, he gets a finger tattoo every week, so he needs to let his fingers heal before he can get to the YouTube. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he's still got fucking 10 toes, and he's probably going to put letters on those as well. Make no mistake, he will. Because can you imagine I, the type of jungle that's in between ISIS's butt cheeks? Yeah, it's got to be fucking wild. There's probably dingleberries all in that thing like a Christmas tree. The Rainforest Cafe in his ass. Because he's Cause, got fucking fuel. And here's what I'm going to say. When we can get our Patreon, and I'm just going to say it, and unfortunately because I'm saying it on the air, live on the air, it's just going to have to be truth and it's just going to have to be what it is, but it'll be worth it. When we get our Patreon, to $100,000 a year, I am going to post a picture of my open asshole, and Giannis, live on the podcast, <laughs> is, that, is going to put one of Zach Isis's toes in his mouth for three seconds. <laughs> so that is that right here. That's, that's what are we going to do, what are we gonna do with Mike Mush? Mike Mush, we're going to fucking... Because we'll let Mike Mush when fart Mike, on your head. Because when Mike Mush is awake and laughing at the pod, you know it's a good joke and it has to be true. Yeah. Because most of the time, Mike Mush is just fucking nodding off. Yeah. So the fact that Mikey laughed at that one means it has to be true. When we get to $100,000, we're at $36,000 a year right now. We get to $100,000, I will post a picture of my open asshole and Giannis will put one of Zach Isis's toes in his mouth for three seconds live. That is for Wild. Pa Patreon.com slash Village. Let me just be very crystal clear with Mike Mush right now. Yeah. I'm going to tell you about your future. All right, I was looking at you and I saw your future. Here we go. I saw you wearing a tool belt of insulin needles, and that's what it's going to be. How long do you think that's going to happen? Three to five years, that kid's got a fucking Batman and Robin tool belt filled with insulin needles. Yeah, Mikey. I was, no, he's losing a lot of weight. Look at his face. Because you're doing good. Yeah, How much have you lost? Really? Good. I could tell. I, right, right when I looked at him, I was like, no, I disagree. Cuz you look fucking jacked. Cuz your jawline is bad. Cuz make no mistake, I'm running a lot and it just feels good to not Here's the thing. I've been letting the gay come out uh -huh. because it, it I realized the reason why Let the why, gay out with a nice yas right now. Just, yeah. Yeah, let it out. Come on, Chris. Yeah. 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 <laughs> because it takes a lot of energy to push down the gay 24-7. That's why your triceps are That's so That's why diesel. my triceps are so jacked. So what I've been doing now is I've been letting the gay pop out about an hour a day. Yeah. I just fucking tuck it back. Yeah. I sit on my ottoman. I cross my legs. I throw on Real Housewives in New Jersey. Yeah. And I just fucking get on Grindr and see what's popping. <laughs> Because <laughs> when I'm over at your house and you crawl up onto the counter, yeah, that I'm would... letting the gay out. When I do that, yeah, I'm letting you're the gay letting out. the gay out. But I wish I had a bowling ball that I could just throw at you. Yeah, cause... I want to knock you off that counter like bowling pins. Because that's a fun. You you get a kick out of that when it was me. It was me, Giannis, and Delilah, my daughter, last week, and we were there was plenty of seats because only two people and me. And I just crawled up on my kitchen counter and I was watching history docs with you picking my toes, sitting Indian style on my kitchen counter. Yeah, you and look... I didn't even realize I was there. Truly, I didn't even realize yeah. that I had done that. It's only when you called it out, when like, what are you doing? I kind of came to and was like, why yeah. am I on here? You're, so you... that's happened. I've blacked out and I've blacked out. 100% I've blacked out a few times. Half your life is lived blacked out. It's a blacked out. Because? Because when I ask you what we did yesterday, you have no recollection I, of it. I don't have any recollection. You're a, you live in the moment like a fucking dog. Like a dog. I'm just ready to go. Yeah. Because, and then let's, I want to get to, I want to get to James Armistead Lafayette, but just real quick, I just want to talk about this real quick, is I was with Patty Flyballs, a.k.a. Pat Finnegan, a.k.a. FDNY Patty, and, and he, we were in Denver. This weekend, by the way, thank you to all the History of Hina fans that came out to Denver. There was five sold out shows at Denver Comedy Works, so thank you guys so much. There's a lot of Hina fans out there, and we appreciate that. Um, uh, but the article came out in the New York Times about the 200 priests who, with alleged abuse um, from the Brooklyn Queens diocese, and you sent out a 10 out of 10, yeah. a 10 out of 10 fucking meme of Patty Flyballs yeah. reading the article, looking for the priest, and yeah. then the next picture is he found the priest. <laughs> 
And make no mistake, one fa- one priest on there, Father Joe Keller, married my mom and dad. Yeah. So it's just what it is. Wild. It's been confirmed now because I've seen a couple of priests' names that I recognize from St. Matthias yeah. that the blackouts have some meaning now. Yeah. Yeah, and there's just some answers to some questions because I may have been skull fucked more than once. Because this yesterday was a rough day for the tri-state area. For the Irish kids. For the Irish kids, the Puerto Rican kids. Yeah. And, and the Italian kids. Yeah, the Greeks, you kind of escaped this. There's no real no. abuse in the Greek church. No. And we have to talk about What's the reason why it only is Catholic priests? Because it's a is it a, is it a, is it a cover for gay men? Look, gay pedophiles. Look, I'm gonna just I, I, and then we gotta get to James Armistead. Yeah, look, I, I'm I'm just gonna queue up Zach. You're gonna be saying what, it's just what it is in some language yeah. after what I'm about to say. Oh, I'm, and Wei Shan we need because I'm just about to be crystal clear with everybody. Let's go. Life is too hard for most people to raw dog. Yeah, and what I mean by that is. You need some type of sauce to be able to survive emotionally. Yeah. It's a tough life. Even best case scenario, it's going to be tough. People you love are going to die. You're going to struggle. You're going to be uncomfortable. You got to be a fighter to survive. Yeah. And you got to have a sense of humor to survive emotionally. Yeah. That's the best way to do it. Yeah. Comedy and sense of humor. Yeah. But most people, that's not enough. Right. Because they're just not strong enough to face the pain. Yeah. So they pain over the pain. Yeah. They paint over the pain with booze. Yeah. With vape pens. Yeah. With weed. Yeah. With donuts and food. Yeah. With religion. Yeah. Make no mistake, religion is a stale, poisonous philosophy mm-hmm. and mantra that gets in your brain and turns you into a less than evolved, barely sliding into humor bipedal creature that walks on two legs. Yeah. But it makes you closer to the monkeys than it does to Elon Musk. Yeah. And it's just what the fuck it is. It's what Tanya it is. Adanya. So when you want to <laughs> know why Catholic priests are touching kids, it's because the dumb mantra yeah. tells them that they can't jerk off, they have to have guilt, and that... They're not supposed to have sex. Yeah. You cannot sublimate life's urge for procreation. That's right. the strongest instinct that life is born with. And if you think for one second that you're not programmed the way you're programmed, because during your formative years when that big head was forming and solidifying, <laughs> they were screwing in that shit into your brain. Yeah. You got another thing coming because Chrissy Catholics... <laughs> Is what led to Chrissy Chaos. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> yeah! Cause that's a fucking wild thing you just said, and it's true. And make no mistake, for the first time in my life, I spoke to my mom and Aunt Eileen on the phone. And my mom. Wow, that must have been. You, could yeah. you get a word in edge wise? Yo, well, I'm, I'll let you say how my Aunt Eileen said it. <laughs> yeah, but my mom and Aunt Eileen. Well, they both kind of what they said was, hi, Aunt Eileen. What they said was, is I said, can you believe what's happened? And even my mom and Aunt Eileen said, if I was a young boy, uh, when, I, when I was a young boy, um, if this stuff was happening and this stuff was prevalent in the news, they wouldn't let me go on trips up to Usopus, where we used to go, where there was big Catholic retreats up there for Archbishop Malloy and St. Matthias. Yeah. They said I wasn't really allowed to go. Thanks, Annalie. What do you have to say to that? <coughs> Mother, it's good. With- <coughs> I agree with my sister, of course, because, you know, listen, Chrissy, I mean, you know, we, we both tried the best we can to raise you, okay? Yeah. <laughs> we tried to have clear divisions on what was my house and what was her house and of course the staircase was for everybody <laughs> including family relatives friends or whatever yeah. um i always agree with your mother because your mother's a very hard working woman I mean, she had to raise you because someone had to bring home the bacon because your father's a good for nothing gambler <laughs> <laughs> but that aside yeah the problem is now chrissy that <clears throat> hold on uh, <laughs> the problem is <laughs> you know they're talking about it now Right. Why is everybody talking about it? Yeah. I mean, you know, back in the day, we went to Mass. Everyone minded their business and kept quiet. You know, we went to Mass. We ate the blood and bread of Christ. Yeah. And we went along our business. Yeah. Well, you know, Father Bill came over. We got him an Entenmann's cake. We had a nice thing. We did our crosses, and everything yeah. was fine. And then Nobody he took me down. Questions. And then he took me down in the basement to help me do the laundry. He helped you do the laundry. Right. And Victor was disciplined. 
we're gonna need a lot of cackles because I'm yeah. losing it. Right no, now. go ahead. It doesn't matter. He's dead. Yeah, well, he had to discipline me a few times, but that was just nobody talked about what was happening. Yeah. The problem is these fucking liberal reporters now. <laughs> yeah. These liberal reporters on welfare, they're talking. Everyone's writing articles. Nobody needs to know what the truth is. They know what they're doing. We put faith in our fathers yeah. representing the Virgin Mary. And so that's the real problem, Chrissy. You got to tell all your comedy friends. By the way, where's Denver? Was that fun for you? Yeah, Denver was nice. They where's had that? Is that in Long Island? <laughs> no, it's in it's in the by the Rocky Mountains. They have a oh, lot, they have a lot of churches there. Yeah, the Native American Native American casinos. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the yeah the Native Americans. Yeah, they got come and they, Chrissy. They, we're yeah, just really proud of you. I just you. want you. to Yeah, we're really proud of you, Chris. We're right. I'm you know I, I, as your mother, I'll always love you. And then, you know, Delilah just needs to hang out more with what, with this side of the family. And, you know, I can't want to have a tattoo on it. I'm sorry, Father Bill. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, James. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Chris, you know, your mother gets a little excited when we're talking about your baby's mom. She just, yeah. We're just very proud of you yeah. that you travel in the country and that you have a friend from Park Slope. Just please keep doing that. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do we have to cackle that whole part out? No, let's keep it. No, let's cackle it out or remove it and put it on the Patreon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're going to cackle out that whole conversation only for the Patreon because make no mistake, I'm fucking screwed in. Happy Hanukkah. Because <laughs> this is what I realized and what hit me. Patreon.com like slash Bay Ridge Boys. This is what hit me like a ton of bricks. Yeah. When we were sitting, we were about to get a couple of salads. Yeah. And then because we have to get to James Armistead are Lafayette because we're 27 minutes into the podcast and make no mistake, we have fucking Danny HPV soda coming up. Yeah, we do. And it's Black History Month, so it is what it is. Well, but get, get, this, get this last point out. I just want to, it hit me when you asked me about if we could do Freddie Mercury. Yeah. For Black History Month. Yeah. At first I'm going, is he fucking stupid? Yeah. But then I realized and it hit me when we were about to get salads. Yeah. I said, look, Chrissy is just a white kid from Queens. Yeah. You're just an FDNY kind of kid. Yeah. And so when you're around anyone who's not from Queens, yeah. you're just kind of dealing with it. Yeah. You're just kind of dealing with it. You're just kind of looking from the outside going like, yeah. I don't quite get what's going on here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I need to be around my guys. Yeah. And so- I don't blame you as much for saying, hey, can we do Freddie Mercury for Black History Month? Yeah. Because you're just a fucking FDNY head from Queens. Because, like, let's be, I'm just going to be crystal clear. Yeah. Because I'm just going to be crystal clear about something. Like, the way that it's talked about in Ridgewood is just different. Like, my, I had an Uncle yeah. Jimmy that he used to just say, instead of having my coffee black or coffee with no milk, he would say, can I just have my coffee Leroy? Way song she ain't. Way song she ain't. <laughs> Way song she ain't. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. <laughs> Way song she ain't. Yeah, yeah, that's what Uncle Jimmy used to say, cuz, and it's not right, but it's just the truth, and it's just a Ridgewood coffee. Cuz? Yeah. Did he really used to say I that? Swear. He said, give me a Leroy? He said, I, like my, I want my coffee Leroy. Way song she ain't. Okay. <sighs> yeah, cuz, yeah. Cause it hurt. Yeah, well, I mean it's just true. Oh boy, that get me, that hit me hard. It you, hit you I, hard. I, right? I got hit a few times. Yeah, and then yeah. you know what? It's funny though. I mean, it's I funny. think even black kids have to admit that that's pretty funny. Funny. Yeah. 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 It's it, yeah. Wow. He's give me. So he would go in every time and say, "Give me Leroy." Give me. But and it's just you know. It, and they knew what he was they referring knew what to. Knew it was. So he would tell my aunt Eileen like you know, yeah. no, and they would just everybody would just laugh about it. But you know, I knew it was wrong. But it's still yeah. you know. It's just funny. Like you said, black kids could laugh at it because my Uncle David and my Uncle Russell's boyfriend would laugh at it. Yeah. Look, you know? New York is he's just... A, he's, a, he's a black gay kid. Yeah. New York is just a specific place. Let's just be crystal That's clear. what it is. New we're, York is. we're New Yorkers. Yeah. It's a specific place where we just kind of know who we're dealing with within a couple of seconds. Yeah. Because that's just what you had to do to... To, to survive To survive here. in New York. You just kind of know what's being thrown at you immediately. Yeah. And you know, if I saw your Uncle Victor on the street, I would probably say, hey, this kid's probably tortured a few people in the basement. It is what it is. <laughs> 
is. what it is, and it's just the truth. But yeah. make no mistake, when you look at old pictures of Yanni P, you look at pictures of old me playing ball, we're surrounded by every religion, every culture, every race, because the fucking truth is we're just New York kids. We love everybody. Yeah, it's just it's just kind of what it is. Yeah. We're not scared. We don't have to... I mean, you know... Yeah, exactly. I, there's racism in in cities and in northeast quarter. percent. But it's like you know, it's like the Irish, 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 and and blacks and blacks and Puerto Ricans and Italians, and it's like yeah, it's like city racism, and it's stupid. It's stupid. But like you said the other episode, it's not the same as like that southern like you know, like they want to hurt people. Yeah, like hey boy, you know, yeah, like, y'all y'all could have went back to Africa if you wanted. Y'all got to get out. Don't talk to my dog. It's not like that level of like, hey man, get off my property. Yeah, you I would know? never once in a million years ever think because someone's not my race or religion that they're inferior to me in any way. No. It just was a thing that just never even occurred to me until I started to get older that other people think like that and they were just always stupid. Yeah. And then you yeah. got into comedy and you realized that you just had to pretend people were funny if yeah. they were a certain ethnicity or sexual orientation. Yeah, that now no just, matter what. That was just play pretend with that, <laughs> but that's just a different story. Yeah. Santa's black. <laughs> So, cause, but, but yeah, you're look, a good fucking kid. I'm a good fucking kid, and I did some research, and I looked back into the history books, and I'm a fucking Revolutionary War kid. I'm Colonial Chris D. You are I Colonial love, Chris I D. I love yeah. Colonial times. Me, I want Yanni to come the week after his wedding with me to the uh, D.C. Draft House, which I'll be March 8th and 9th. <laughs> Um, or March 9th and 10th, I apologize. I can't because I will be in Philadelphia okay, the 8th so and 9th. doesn't matter yeah, then. Yeah, it doesn't matter. But I wanted him to come with me to Colonial Williamsburg, but he can't. Um, but that's okay. But I'll be there March 9th. And t uh, I'm sorry. I will be there March 8th and March eighth and 9th. And you'll be where March 8th and 9th? I will be in uh, Philadelphia March 8th and 9th. I will be in at West Nyack, New York at Levity Live in West Nyack, New York the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. Four. So March, come see me in West Nyack or Philadelphia. Yeah, okay, great. Or go see Chrissy in D.C. In D.C. and also be at the Philadelphia. I'll be in Philly. If you can't make it Giannis this weekend, I'll be in Philly this weekend, March 21st. Um, I'm sorry, I'll be in Philly this weekend, February 21st to the 23rd at the Philadelphia Punchline. Cause, and these hyenas are fucking because they're reproducing and we're, our cackle is getting big. Bigger. It's getting bigger. Like today's Patreon members, which we'll read at the end of episode at the end of every episode. If you if you join our Patreon, you get your name right at the end of episode. It's the longest list of Patreon newest members of the matriarchy that we've ever had ever. We just keep multiplying because we're fucking. So okay, so I did research. His name is James Armistead Laf Lafayette. He was just born a slave, just James. A lot of slaves were just born with one name, their first name, and it's whatever their owners named them because they have no idea what lineage they actually came from. So that's why, you know, when you see, even still to this day, like you'll see, you know, Shaquille O'Neal, and you'll be like, O'Neal, that's Irish. Well, it's probably because whatever lineage his family came from, his slave owners had that Irish name, and they just kept it along. So... He was born James and then James Armistead because his owner, William Armistead, uh, you know, slave owner, he took the last name. So he was born in, when was he born? In the 1750s, I believe. Sometime in the 1750s. Doesn't matter the right 17, year. 17. Uh, Who cares? Yeah, it's 40s, it, I think. It doesn't ever matter. Like when people are always like, oh, yeah, yeah. what year was born? It's like, it, who cares? At this point, you just Google it. Yeah, just fucking Google it. It doesn't matter because the, it's not about when he was born. It's about what he did during his life. And that I do know shit about. So, by the way, this is a great, this is a great fucking grab by you. This is a very interesting, fascinating Black History Month story. Absolutely. 1748. 1748. 1748. Yeah. Thank you, Zachy Isis fingers. So, um, what happened was, is let me let me just explain. So, obviously, we know the the Revolutionary War, America's fight for freedom. You know, British tyranny, fucking pigs holding us down. Uh, you know, not, you know, making us pay taxes unjustly. And, you know, we don't want to be part of the British Empire anymore. So we're going to get our fucking freedom because we're free American kids. So um, what happened, uh, the, you know, we devise our army, the colonial army and slaves. What do we do with all these slaves? Because America had a big slave population. What we were saying initially, initially in the beginning, slaves could not fight for the colonial army, for the continental army. We could, they weren't allowed. But Britain came along and said, hey, listen. Practically. Practically any slave who's enslaved right now by the Americans or any slave from Britain, if you fight for us and join this army right now, you get freedom at the end of this war. If yeah. we win this war, you're a free man. You have the same rights, air quotes, rights as any white man because what Britain's whole, you know, what Britain's whole um, kind of agenda was and it kind of made sense. It was like, hey, listen, 
Benjamin Franklin, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Samuel Adams. These are great men, right? They're such great men that they're fighting for freedom from us, the British, you know, tyrannical rule. But it's really only about white men because they're saying we want to be free, but that doesn't include slaves. Right. So, But Britain was saying we will free you if you join our army. Probably just to... Cause a little chaos, and yeah. I mean, who knows what they would have done exactly? But, but they you, wanted a, whatever, whatever, whatever mutiny they could get. Yeah. They wanted because, like, like my mom always says, you can only make the decision with the choices you have in the present because you don't know what's going to happen in the future. Yeah, and her, my son didn't listen to any of that. I didn't listen to any of that because I said, "Well, mama, I'm making a decision right now. I'm not pulling out with this girl with a tattoo in her tit." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to get. Hey, hey. It's just what it is. It's just what it is. So. What happens is this. So um, they're fighting the war. And then because, you know, let's let's be crystal fucking clear. The uh, U.S., the USA, the 13 kinds, we're getting our asses handed to us until France comes and joins the war because they just hated England. So the top general of the French army, General Marquis de Lafayette, who, by the way, if you watch any colonial movie or you want, like if you watch uh, Mel Gibson's movie, The Patriot, he's always depicted as this old general with gray hair and looks like George Washington. He was a 21 year old kid. That kid was 21 years old. Marquis de Lafayette was a 21 year old fucking kid who was the head, the highest decorated member of the French army. In the in colonial America and George Washington's right hand man as a twenty one year old fucking kid. Yeah, back then you just grew up a lot quicker. Because at twenty one years old, I was still sleeping in the bed with my mother. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. You know what's wild to me? It's like the thirteen colonies. Yes. At that point, were the descendants of the Brits. Yes. So at what point did they become American? You know, I, they were like, hey, we're getting taxed. We don't have representation. When did they start to form that identity of like, hey, we're disconnected from you now? Yeah. You know, it, do you think it had to do with when their accent changed? Like once they started to talk like this and no yeah. longer like, hello. Well, I think this is for the queen. Yeah. Once that started to end, they started to feel like American kids. I think they start, that's when they started to feel like yeah. American kids. Yeah. yeah. And probably. Um, and the Virginians talk like that. And they, yeah. didn't, they didn't sound like this anymore. No. Now they start to have like real. And then they're like, we need our own fucking country. Yeah, we need our own fucking country. Yeah. Because we red, white, and blue. Yeah. Yeah. We're no longer fighting for the queen. No. No. So that's. Yeah. So that's probably when that happened is when the accents changed. But Armistead. Um, so it's it's now now the Revolutionary War started 1776. First of all, he looks like Hannibal Burris. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what, if, what if we just said everybody we covered who's black looks like Hannibal Burris? Because let's make no mistake, the only way to get controversial and get Hannibal the only way to get Hannibal Burris on our podcast is to get controversial. Just like the only way he was able to get famous sell tickets is he'd be controversial and help Bill Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> Demon Peso, dude. That's uh, not true at all. That's not true but at all. But it's he, funny. He yeah. was selling a lot of tickets because he's fucking a great comic. Yeah. And uh, he's got a good cadence. He's got a good cadence and he's yeah. a smart, screwed and he's in a kid. Smart fucking kid. Yeah. And he's just a funny fucking kid. Yeah. Um, and he's great. So, um, and he's a big friend of the show. We are cold as ice. And he's a cold as ice, probably a sociopath, and we'd love to get him on the podcast. <laughs> probably a sociopath. You're Chrissy. You're Chrissy Truth, sir. Yeah, I'm Chrissy Truth, because let's make no mistake, I'm 6'2", 235, and I could throw some hands. So if you want to say something... Because you just made yourself an inch taller. You could say it to my face. Yeah, because you are a big fucking kid. I'm a kid. big fucking but kid. But you're not 6'2", you're 6'1". I'm 6'1". Which is more impressive that you could dunk. And I'm not 230, I'm more like 239. You fat fuck. I got fat tits. Because your ass is fucking fat. But I got no fumes, because make no mistake, I am the Uberman. You're German. Yes. Um... So, in when when General Lafayette, the reason why he's significant is because let's be crystal clear about something. In 1776, even though it's the colonial war, we're fighting for our freedom. George Washington and Thomas Jefferson, even though he banged out, you know, his slaves, there still is an inferior view. Even though it's got Alexander Hamilton, who everybody loves now, there's still an inferior view of black people at that time. It's just what it is. They just they look at them as inferior people and property and slaves. And that was continuing. That was that that was three fifths of a man. Three fifths of a man. That was true even for great our greatest thinkers. They yeah. just thought that way. Brutal. So, brutal. Brutes magoots. So but they start to lose the war. And Lafayette comes over with the French army and friend in France are a little bit more progressive. They still 
you know, had their problems, but they were they in their country they were looking at blacks at that time as not three fifths of a man. They're more like a four fifths. Of this is he's closer to a man. He is uh, closer to the man. Yes, he's a very sp- sexy special. Mm. Yeah, so it was still an inferior view, but it wasn't as inferior as the American view, if that makes sense. So what he said is, he said, "Look," he said, "Talk to Georgie Washington," and he talked to the guys, and he said, "Look, you first of all, number one." He said, you have to, he said, you have to start to make these slaves. You, you have to get them in the army. We need bodies. Yeah. He said, so what they'll be good at. And fucking jack bodies, because black kids got fucking abs. Yeah, they're fucking jack. We need some of those jack bodies. Because, make no mistake. Because Lafayette was French, so he was probably half gay. Because, let us be. Let me just be fucking honest with you. I got a fucking little chubby when I saw on the news this week, when I saw who Jussie Smollett's attackers were, those two Nigerian princes. <laughs> I was like, yo, they're fucking jack cute. Not Ni- là những gì nó là. Yeah, yeah, they're cute Nigerian kids. And yeah. Jussie Smollett is a mental illness. That's for another point in time. <laughs> yeah, but he's a good looking kid, too. He's a good looking kid. And I didn't know he was in the movie Mighty Ducks. He's which also is got nice wild. teeth. He's nice teeth. But make no mistake, being famous in Hollywood is a mental illness. It's a mental he, illness. He has it. Yeah. So, is. yeah. anyway, besides the point. Marquis de Lafayette convinces the uh, American army, we need to use slaves. We need to use the slaves. We need to, you need to offer the same thing that Britain's offering. Give them their freedom. You have to do that. And you also have to start to employ them into this army in different ways. Soldiers, cooks. And he has comes up with the idea for James Arms. Break dancers. Break dance. Yeah. Yeah. It's just absolutely. <laughs> Way song he, uh, James Armistead. James Arm he has the idea for James Armistead because he was taught how to read by William Armistead, his slave master, and he says, Look, I met this guy, James Armistead. He said, I think he would be good going undercover. What we'll do, so what we'll do is we'll have him go undercover as a waiter and a cook. Wait, that was that was after, but that was that was after. First he is pretended to be an an escaped slave. Well, no, but that's what I'm getting to. Yeah, but no, but the cook thing was afterwards. This was the cook came when he when he got Cornwallis. Well, but no, first he got Benedict Arnold. Well, well, yeah, but as an escaped slave, uh, yeah. no, 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 he didn't. Let me just let me fucking tell you what happened. I think you're wrong. No, d- no. So what happened was is the plan by Lafayette was to say you're going to be a cook for General Cornwallis. The how you're going to get in there. Is you're gonna walk on the road to Williamsburg, Virginia, and towards Yorkville, Virginia, Yorktown, yeah. Virginia, as an escaped slave. Like, oh, that's so. That's initially how you're gonna get scooped up oh. by the British Red Coat Armies. You're gonna get scooped up as an escaped slave with oh. the with the uh, with the job of being a cook. Oh. So what? And the plan worked. What he had was is he had um, he had uh, like uh, all cooking ingredients and all stuff that a cook would have in his one boot. And he had papers that were forged fake papers that were basically giving him his they're giving him his freedom from the Continental Army. And then he escaped. He was going he was basically said to he was escaping. The plan was he was escaping the colonial rule because he was free now and he didn't want to fight for the American colonies. He wanted to fight for the British because make no mistake, there was still that mindset in seven, in the 1700s is like, do you want, are you loyal to the crown or are you loyal to these new people? Either, because now by 1777, I believe this was, or 1778, both sides were saying blacks are free. Yeah. It's just, who you who do you believe more? The Brits or the Americans? And a lot of blacks still believe the Brits would be truer to their word because they had fucking better accents than the Americans. And his his slave master and him had a pretty good relationship. William Armistead, he taught him how to ju- read. Yeah, he just asked him, "Hey, can I go leave and, and he fight?" Said, and his, his slave master was like, "Yeah, yeah, you can." So William Armistead had to give J- James Armistead permission to yeah. even to even spy for the Continental Army, which is wild. That's how wild being you have to get permission to even fight for your country. Like yeah. you, you are not a human. Yeah. You're you're owned by something yeah. else. So, and we'll get to it later, but yeah. America was so fucked up a place. He did what Chris is about to tell you. He did so much for America. Yeah, especially with the Battle of Yorktown and ending the war. And he yeah. helped. He helped Washington. And then even afterwards, they still didn't want to give him his freedom because yeah. they said, even though there was an act that said all slaves that fought for the Americans were yeah. free, they said, "Nah, he didn't fight. He was a spy. He was a spy." So yeah. they still tried to hold the black man down. down those motherfuckers. Yeah, but um, then the friends helped, helped him. Helped him. So what happens is, is James Armistead does get scooped up by the British Army, and he gets scooped all the way up into General Cornwallis, the highest-ranking general in the British Army's care, specifically as a cook. So as a cook and a waiter. So 
all these meetings that General Cornwallis is having with his top generals, including Benedict Arnold, that fucking dirty fucking traitor, who, we, who is a dirtbag traitor, but we did an episode on him already, and we told you that he's, he's a, a fucking piece of shit. He's a piece of fucking garbage, but yeah. in reality, I mean, he is a piece of shit, and, you know, everyone makes choices. He was kind of getting treated like an asshole by General George Washington, and General George Washington wasn't giving him his money, so Benedict Arnold probably said, well, you know what? If you don't want to give me my money, then I'm going to go fight with the Brits. If you're like, my money, I'm going to change sides. He yeah. was basically, mad, he was getting disrespected like Mad yeah. Dog. Mad that dog would turn on us in a, a second. second. So make no mistake. Because we keep calling his mama too. Oh, well, it's true. Yeah. So make no uh, mistake. Heber. Make no mistake. Benedict Arnold put on his fucking yarmulke and went to the other side. <laughs> so, <laughs> so give me a wish on Chien for that. Can I get a wish on Chien? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, you, you ever notice he hesitates on the Jew jokes? Yeah. He, he hesitates, just hesitates on the Jew jokes because yeah. his brain is... <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's why. So he hesitates, but you got to give a wish on Chien. We got a lot of Jewish listeners. So, um... He gets scooped up and he hears all the fucking dirty shit that's going on with uh with the all the all the moves that the Brits are going to make. So he finds out that Benedict Arnold is going to go fight at Yorktown and his exact movements, uh, exact regiment numbers, everything. He goes back and te- Armistead had a system where he would write letters to somebody else on the inside. I don't know who it was, and they would get the information back because the Washington's camp. And Lafayette's camp wasn't too far away. They were at Williamsburg. Yeah, how was he able to travel between camps unnoticed it was like all, that? It, he wasn't traveling. He would write letters to other so people. So he didn't actually move. He would, like, go a few, you know, whatever, 100 yards outside the camp to, like, draw, you know, whatever, do whatever. Like He had was, their trust. He was he like, had, I'm going to get some water. And then he probably met someone in the forest. Exactly. And he was like, hey, man, this is what's going down. So somebody else would come from the forest and, and take those messages. So they fucking beat. The British at Yorktown yeah. and almost captured Benedict Arnold himself. The fucking, but that dirty little fucking slippery sli- little that slippery little fuck. fuck. He fucking slipped away into the night. But he retreated and was gone. But he retreated and was gone. But the colonial army won that won that war, won that battle, and then that was one of the biggest turning points of the war because now you know you're pushing the Brits back, yeah. and it just kept going and going and going. And General and James Armistead never got caught. By Cornwallis until the very end when he rejoined the army. He rejoined the Continental Army. Army, And actually, there was an actual real interview with Armistead and Cornwallis. And Cornwallis said to Armistead, I was going to give you your freedom. Like, why, why would you do this to me? And Armistead said, because I want to be free, but I want to be free in the country I was born in. And this is the country I was born in. So he, even Armistead, even knowingly... He's an American kid. American kid. And that's why I love James Armistead's story so much is because he was could have he was offered right away British freedom by the British Army to fight. And he still said, no, he said, I'm a TBP, a true blue patriot, and I'm going to fight. I guarantee you, he said, I'm going to fucking fight for the Americans. And when we win, I'm going to give him my freedom because I trust him. And the truth is, like, what always happens, happens is they won the... They won the war, and then he wasn't given his freedom to a few years later, and then he was probably pissed, and he's like, you know what I should have did? I should have just fought with the Brits because these Americans are fucking liars. Yeah, there was an act, like I said, that said if you fought for the Americans, you had your freedom, and they said, oh, he didn't fight for his, he was a spy, so he didn't right. get his freedom. Then the Marquis Lafayette came through, noticed he was still a slave, was a little pissed about that, made a case for him, and said, yo, you got to let this dude be free because right. he's my boy. And so he petitioned for him to be free, and Lafayette helped him win his freedom because Lafayette was like a god. Yeah. Him and George Washington became like gods. gods. Statues to Lafayette everywhere, D.C., etc. cetera. Um, so, and then he became free, and um, right. he ended up moving uh, up to, uh, what, 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 what part? Where he lived in um, like Richmond, Virginia area. Yeah, somewhere around, somewhere it, around somewhere, there. And he got 40 acres. He bought himself eight. He actually had a couple slaves. Yeah, well, that's the interesting part about yeah. James Armistead, and the interesting part about slavery is when James Armistead finally was granted his freedom, I believe in like 1788, by the uh, Virginia government, he was given he was given two mules and three slaves, and he actually kept those slaves to do the work because it was just a thought process then that you needed people to work on your farm and on your land, and those people could only be black slaves. Now, Armistead, because he was you know, fairly treated by William Armistead, his white slave master, and of course James Armistead is black, he, he didn't treat his slaves unfairly. He treated them very kindly yeah. and just used them as workers, and they were free to roam around the house, and it was, they were, you know, they were still enslaved because they were owned by Armistead. They weren't free men, but on the property that they weren't beaten they weren't yeah. they were treated as human beings yeah yeah but he it's an uncomfortable truth yeah it's just what it is 
He was a freed slave who in turn had slaves yeah. on his farm, and he lived his life out as a farmer, Yeah, and he died, I think, in Baltimore. And then you're saying- And he also got a pension from the government. He got like some loot that he had he to go got pick some up. Loot. And he got 250 beans yeah. when, 250 bucks when he became a free man, which was an extraordinary amount of money. Most people, most white men for selling a slave would only get a hundo. He got twice as much plus half because, you know, they just want to, they want to you know, recognize him. And then at, when he became a free man, he said- you know, because he has, you know, let's be honest, like when you're a slave like that, you have no identity really from your actual birth roots. You don't know where you're from. You just were born into slavery and hardship. So his last name was Armistead, but then he changed it to James Armistead Lafayette. He took the Marquis de Lafayette's last name because the only because when he initially he what he kept getting denied freedom until Marquis de Lafayette himself came back for a tour yeah. of the 13 colonies and then the the uh, new 11 states we had 24 states he toured all 24 states and in his touring he said I want to make Armistead a free man he couldn't believe that he's not couldn't believe that he wasn't so yeah. it was really Lafayette that pushed the US government the colonial government to fucking be free yeah um so uh to, to give Armistead his freedom so that's what he did and that's why James Armistead Lafayette is the name that goes down in history because he took Marquis de Lafayette's last name. You got to appreciate how much of a giant figure he is because you got to know how important that battle was at Yorktown. Yeah. It was basically the end of the war. Yeah. And he was m instrumental in providing yeah. intelligence on the movement of the of the troops. He he was actually the prevent he he helped prevent reinforcements of the British troops at Yorktown in yeah. Virginia. And that he was able to win the trust of right. Benedict Arnold, who was just giving him secrets. Yeah. And then was was smart enough to fucking he was an act because he was Donnie Brasco. Yeah. He was Don he was Leroy Brasco. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Wei Xing, please. Wei Xing. What it is? Because he, I mean, that's a dangerous job. He was a fucking. He did a, uh, 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 uh invaluable. Yeah. Invaluable contribution to the American revolutionary effort. And as a cook and as a waiter, he was in those little dinner meetings that Cornwallis had. And he yeah. overheard all these, you know, secrets. Yes. And he was able to go back and give them to the cook boys. Yeah, give them to the fucking to the boys. boys. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. And that's what happens. And Britain just fucking, even today, the reason why you're fucking not even close to the U.S. is because you still have a queen. And let's this is a patriarchy-driven society. And let's be crystal no, clear joking. about something. Yeah. The reason why he probably turned down freedom yeah. uh, with the Brits yeah. is because they, they were probably like, you know, we offer you to come back to uh, the motherland. And he's like, all right, like, that sounds good. Can I, um, what kind of food y'all got? Yeah. And they were like, um, well, we have toast and um, beans. Yes. And he's like, I right, come on, man. Nah. Y'all ain't got no pigs out there. Yeah. Y'all ain't got no greens. No. Y'all ain't got no sweet potatoes. No, nah, let's be honest. The reason why. And no Italian food? Yeah, the reason why he stayed in America is the reason why everyone stays in America. Fucking Pete's. Pete's. James Armistead said, I just want Pete's. So I don't want to fight for the fucking dirty British government. I want to fight for the Americans because they got Pete's. Yeah. And if I want to be transgender, I could be it. I'll be the fucking next president one day. Okay. So that was about James Armistead and, uh, He's just a fucking powerful black American that I don't think enough people know about. Yeah. And um, he just makes me... And fuck, we got Dan Soder coming up. Ooh, it's exciting, but only the non-toots will get it for four weeks. Yeah. But he's lurking around here. He's a lurky, dangly he's a, he's motherfucker. He's a lurky, dangly kid. Yeah. yeah. He's a lurky... Denver and, Dan's and, in the building. Denver Dan, he's going to be on our next episode that's only for the Patreon members. For a couple weeks. For a couple of weeks. Yeah, you can know him from Billions and you, and you know him from Guy Code because that's what you just know. You know, he's just another white comedian that people think is Andrew Schultz. All three of you are Andrew Schultz. We're all Andrew Schultz. <laughs> but before we go, as we always do, we're going to read out the newest members of the matriarchy, the people who fucking are now. They've went from non-toots. They've went from toots. They were dirty prostitutes. And now they are fucking clean. They have clean asses and no fumes. And they're non-toots because they went to patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys. And as usual, I will read their names and Giannis will guess their ethnicity. Because you look like a retired American gladiator. Yeah, I'm an American gladiator with tits. First up, Brian Castillo. Yo, que pasa, mi gente? Yeah, Brian Castillo likes to fucking have a bath in a fire hydrant. That's what it is. Yeah, Rocky. Can Mar we get a Wei Shang Xing, please? Wei Shang Xing. Rocky Maroki. 
Or, Rock, or Roki Maroki. Roki Maroki. He definitely has a van with a phone number on the outside. And no. he's got a family business. He spells it R-O-K-I. And then last name, M-U-R-O-K-I. He's either a Jap. He's a Panamanian kid. Move on to the next one. Okay, thank you for your service, <laughs> Roki Maroki. Next up, Leo Love Handles. Leo Love Handles is a funny kid. PPW nominee. Yeah, PPW nominee. Funny. Now we got Matt Lewandowski. Matt Lev- He's a dumb Polak. You're a dumb Polak, you pierogi fuck. <laughs> um, but thank you for joining. <laughs> Oh, here's one of my people yeah. in service. The fourth hike, Brett Meinhardt. Brett Meinhardt and Orson Eisen. Eisen, the Uberman, Brett Meinhardt. He's Meinhard. a German. Next up, Antonio Zona. Antonio Zona has a van with a phone number on the outside. He loves his mother. Yeah, next up, Colin Hoover. Colin Hoover is a fucking white kid. Wait, next up, Southeast Asian Muzzy Boy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. PPW nominee. Yeah. Next up, Rady Puguero. Rady Puguero? I don't know. Sounds like he's Dan Soder's friend from Arizona, and they were dealing drugs together when they got robbed in an Arizona studio apartment. Yeah. And they both got salamander tattoos, and they're white trash. Andrew Bankin. Andrew Bankin? Yeah. That's a waspy, white, fucking pasty kid. Justin Washington. Justin Washington? He is a... He is, uh, this, this month's for him. Yeah. Yeah. Happy Black History Month, Justin Washington. <laughs> yeah. Next up, Justin Knapp. Justin Knapp? He's a- K-N-A-P-P. Ja- yeah, he's a Filipino kid. He's related to Andrew Kunanen. Yeah. Jasit Mangat. Jasit Mangat? Yeah. He's a South Asian doctor. He's a South Asian doctor. Meaning doc- he's an Indian kid. Yeah, he's a South Asian doctor, meaning he moved to America and now works at a 7-Eleven. Yeah. Um, and he wants all Pakistanis dead. Yeah, except Hassan Minaj. He's not Pakistani. It but- doesn't matter. They're all the same to me. <laughs> Wei Song Xian. I'm kidding. Wei Song Xian. Yeah. Welcome to the sandbox. Um... <laughs> Michael Gugig. <laughs> Michael Gugig? Michael Gugig. Michael Gugig. Yeah. Wow, that's a he's a Croatian kid. Yeah, this kid's a Croatian yeah. fucking kid. Gugig. Dobre kako se. Trino Agoniga. Trino Agoniga? Also Trino 14. Trino 14? Yeah. Wow, he's a dumb fucking Lithuanian kid. Yeah. Next. Pat Cole. Pat Cole? That is a wasp kid. There's no question his great-grandparents... Fucking had slaves in Virginia. 100%. Pat Cole. Kimberly VDW. She sounds like a pop, 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 she spells her name K I M B E R L E E. That means she swallows. Nathan Eastman. Nathan Eastman? Same thing. His grandparents, probably no Cole's grandparents. 100%. He comes, he's a plantation kid, and there's wild game on a family property in Africa that's in his name. Claudio Robe, Robes, R O B L E S. Claudio Robes? Robe, Robles. Robes. Robles? Ro- Robles. A, oh, he's a French kid. Claudio he's Robles. A dumb fucking kid. Next up, one name, Rolando. If you have one name, you're in the NBA draft, you're a black kid. Have yeah, yeah. Oh! <laughs> okay. Nick. Oh, here's one of your guys. Yeah. Nick Caravolos. Nico Ticani Devre. Puise Ramoto. He fuck he comes Suzuki. Cause that's a kid who lives in the basement with his parents and works in his parents' restaurant. Hundred percent. Next up, Bradley Bitch Tits, former toot, now just cute. <laughs> <laughs> PPW nominee. 100%. Doesn't matter what it is. He transcends ethnicity. Ken Birch. Ken Birch? B U R C H. Wow. He just sounds like one of those dicky Ken Birch. Is yeah. Ken Birch going to be there? Ken Birch. Yeah. He's just a fucking dangly, dumb white kid. He's got a picture of a dog with a suit on in his profile pic, so it's pretty funny. Yeah. I'm going to say that he's All a right. um, yeah, he's a Polish kid. Next up, Big Piece Patrice. Big Piece Patrice. <laughs> Black kid PPW nominee. Scott M. Stannard. Oh, God. Could you get whiter than a Scott? And it's all in caps lock. God, his he's so white it hurts your back. Absolutely. Scott. Scott. And what's the last name? Um, uh, Stannard. Stannard. Scott Stannard. Scott Stannard. Scott Stannard. Scott Stannard so white. He was the first. He was the initial Jesse Smollett suspect name. <laughs> the, when Jesse Smollett said, what do you think his name could be? Yeah. They said, his name's got to be Scott M. Stanner. Yeah. That's who put a noose around my neck and chemicals on my body. But then when you fucking actually see who it was. Two cute Nigerians. Two kids. cute Nigerians. And last but not least, yeah. Johanny, size 38D, chest, Hernandez. <laughs>
<laughs> well, we know he's a Puerto Rican No, kid. it's a girl. Size oh. 38D chest. Hernandez. Oh. If you really have 38 Ds, then DM me at Chris D Comedy. Yeah, especially if you have pictures on those tits. Yeah, and thank you guys so much. Those are all the new newest members of the matriarchy, the Matreon. They have went to patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys. They will now get... All stuff that that uh, they will all get all the same stuff that you get, but they'll get it weeks in advance. They'll get certain things they'll only get for Patreon, like our walk and talks, our kamikaze episodes, some interviews that we decide if they're so fucking good, we're only going to put them on Patreon. And it's just you get to be a part of our family, and you can write in the community board. It's like the new fraternity. It's like we. It's a fucking safe space. Yeah. Patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys. When we get to a hundred thousand dollars for the year, when we get there, and we will get there, I Chris will, will jump off a building and kill himself. I will jump off a building and kill myself. But before I do that, and we I, will dissect Mike Mush. I will send a picture of my. I will post this, and you have my word. I will post a picture of my open asshole no, on Chris, the Patreon.com no. slash Bay Ridge Boys, and Giannis will put one of Zach Isis's toes in his mouth for three seconds <laughs> when we get to one hundred thousand dollars we're at thirty six thousand dollars now so we will get up there and we can only do it with your guys service do Thank you understand that we're gonna lose patreon members if you're promised that if we get to a certain number you're gonna put a picture of your open asshole on it i'm chrissy goes i'm chrissy kunanen it's what i do i can't be stopped <laughs> we gotta go thank you guys so much for listening i'm gonna go suck a cock in houston we're just gonna call yep. Hope ready honest yep Mike Mush. So what's my, are you are you working with us now? What do you what do you? Do? Oh, I'm just out of town. Because you're just learning everything. Yeah. All right. That's good. Happy to have you. This is Talia Valkanos. Hello? Hey, Talia Valkanos. This is Chris Stefano and Yanni Fettachis Papas from the History of Chachinas. Ticanis. Hi. How are you? Hi. Hi. Thank you for being a valued $25 member of the matriarchy. And the History Hyenas podcast and being part of the cackle. And mostly, thank you for being a pa 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 You're a piece. Are you a Greek girl? I am. I'm 100% Greek. Wow. The, how mad would your dad be right now if he knew you were on the phone with boys? Well, I'm a little bit... Like if I was sixteen, yeah, he'd probably like kill me. But at this point, I think I'm I'm doing okay. Yeah. But do you have a boyfriend? No, I don't. Do you want to come to Giannis Pompas's wedding? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Let's go. Where do you live? Yeah. Where do you live? What? Where do you live? I'm in New Hampshire. Oh, wow. good state. Live free or die. Yeah. So you're yeah. Are, are both your parents yeah. Greek? They both are. My dad actually came here when he was like 35, so he's like straight off. Wow. Like most people can't even understand him with his accent. Yeah. What is he, what Did is he, he open do at a diner? The restaurant? Uh, so he was actually a doctor in Greece. Wow. Wow. So what, is, so what does that mean in America? Restaurant. It means he's a doctor here too, right? So yeah, the, the, license, the license didn't carry over because, I mean, whatever, Europe, America, but he like got into pharmaceuticals and... I don't know. He did like stuff with prescriptions. I don't know. What, I don't know what he did. Well, you know what? New but he's a smart guy. He learned English when he was like thirty-five. So. Of course, yeah. he's a good guy. He's great. He's superior. Yeah, yeah. New Hampshire. Does he? Uh, did, but but he kind of always wanted your boyfriend not to go nuts when around magicians, right? <laughs> Wait. What? He's basically what? saying your dad. He, Chris is saying, <laughs> "Can you get a Wei Zhang Jing on a phone call, please?" <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Wei Song Xi. Yeah. Sorry, thank you. He's basically saying your dad wants you to marry somebody Greek, right? Uh, he just wants me to Or at least somebody white. <laughs> Wei Song Xi. <laughs> uh, he, he just wants me to get married, period. Like, yeah. I could, like, 
like become president and my dad would be like yeah but like have you gotten married yet right, like, right. That's that's- well that's because he wants grandchildren he wants grandchildren yeah 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 i guess that's how's fine. new hampshire do you like new hampshire I love New Hampshire. So I actually, I just moved back to New Hampshire from D.C. Oh. I was in D.C. for like a year and a half. So I just moved over to Portsmouth. Um, I'm going to be in Portsmouth, nice. New Hampshire in May at the Red Hook Brewery. I know. I already I already bought you tickets. So wow. Go. Yes. I'm going to meet your father. <laughs> yeah. Listen, thank no, we uh, obviously all seriousness, just kidding. We really want to thank you for being part oh, of the matriarchy bro. and you know, because you're a value twenty five dollar member, we're gonna call you once a month, every month, and we really appreciate your service. Thank you. And Fari Stopado Police Saga Po Korizaki Mu Hey, you're welcome. Thanks for um teaching me something about history because I'm an engineer and like I just never paid attention in history in school at all. Like I know nothing, and right. this has like given me like a little bit of knowledge, and it's just yeah. it's been good, and it makes me laugh. It's so been I a like catalyst. That. It's been a catalyst for you to Google more. That's yeah. that's what we do here on this podcast. You're an engineer. That well, means you're smart. I don't even, yeah, but to be fair, I don't even think I'm engineer. Uh, I'm googling stuff on history i just listen and that's it but still like even that much like it helps they really helps i feel like a lot well, a lot more well-rounded well thank you very much for yeah. for being a 25 five dollar member we really appreciate you yeah. we'll speak to you next month yeah and uh hopefully you find yourself a greek boyfriend and keep chris away from your dad because your dad will kill you if you bring home this piece of trash thank you thalia happy Orchi day <laughs> happy Orchi day thank right. you guys Bye. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, a Greek girl. Greek girl. Yeah, let's do another Make one. Make no mistake, if she comes to your show and you try to bang out, her father will f- take a machete yeah. and try to cut off that big fucking head. Yeah. Yeah. Let's be honest. She, he, Her dad came from Greece and Googled a map of the United States and just tried to pick the state with the most white people. That's why I moved to New Hampshire. <laughs> Is she, we got Jeremy Lampert. Okay. Jeremy. Is she really a papa? pa She's a papa. Tell you what. Valkanos, don't let your wife hear this episode. Ooh, yes. Cackle, cackle. Mike Suarez. Cackle, we'll cackle over. It's going to be funny because in two weeks, Giannis is going to have a wave. <laughs> That's what we're going to say. Because we're a diverse podcast. Lambert, Jeremy Lambert. Lambert. Jeremy. Yo, yo. Hey. What's up? What's up? Ger- What's up, Jeremy? Hey, Lambert. Um, this is uh, Chris Stefano. What's Yon- up, guys? Yes, Chris Stefano, Giannis Powers from the History I News. You're a value twenty-five dollar member, so we're giving you a call. What are you doing? Um, I am. I'm just enjoying the sun. I'm in fucking Honolulu, and oh, we called you already. Uh, <laughs> fucking amazing! Yeah, right oh, now. you're a kid that we called. Oh, yeah, we yeah, accidentally called. called. Well, now we're not going to call you yeah. again for two months. Yeah, thank gotta, you guys so much. And we got to get off the phone. Thank you for being a valued member of the Matrix. I says Jer- you f- keep fucking up. <laughs> Jeremy Lamb Habert. I'll oh, see you shit. later. We love you, Fuck. brother. Thank you. Love you, brother. Thank you. <laughs> Hang up. Yeah, I thought so when you said Jeremy Lambert. Yeah. Is you there want to a, try a different new one? We no, are. No, but we're just wild. Let's go to the next one. Justin Washington. We're hyenas. Yeah. Mike Suarez. I got to get in the habit of calling him Suarez and not Mike because... I'm not even going to say it because I know you don't like it. No, that's fine. I got used to it. Okay, Mike Mush. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> okay. actually a good nickname. Yeah. Because I, mean, I was getting these. It beats, it beats Chrissy Kavanaugh. <laughs> or Ku Klux Chrissy. Or Ku Klux Chrissy. Or Pussy Hat Pappas. Or, or Isis. <laughs> or Zach Isis Face. We got Justin Washington. Okay. <laughs> Justin Washington. This is a black kid. What? Hello? Hey, what's up, Justin Washington? This is Chris Stefano and Giannis Papas from the History of Hyenas. We just want to ask how you feel being drafted in the NBA draft this year. That <laughs> feels fucking amazing, my dude. Yeah, congrats, man. Because that name sounds like it comes with a stat sheet. Justin Washington. Are you a black kid, a white kid, or a Chinese kid? I'm black as fuck, my guy. Yo, yeah. happy Black History Month, cuz. <laughs> Yo, we know it. Oh! Hey, appreciate it. Thank you, man. Yo. Any more better than being a non-toot right now. Yo, yeah. bro, you're a fucking non-toot. Now, let's be honest. We just have to ask, did you hear us on Andrew Schultz's Flagrant 2 podcast? 
You got damn right. Yeah, yeah, that's just what it is. Yo, Isis wants to know if <laughs> he can send you his demo to see what you think about it. Yeah. Did you think I was uh, Andrew Schultz until I was a guest on his podcast? <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay, where do you live? Is, where do you live? Hey. Oh, where I live right now? Yeah. I live in um I live in Granite Falls, Washington. It's like about thirty, forty five minutes away from Seattle. Wow. Uh originally I'm from um Philadelphia, Maryland though, but I'm in the military, so I bounce around a little bit. Oh. Thank you for your service. Thank you for you your service. So yeah. make no mistake, Justin Washington problem. is one of the boys. Justin Washington is one of the fucking boys. Thank you, cuz we I'm appreciate- one of the goddamn boys. One of the fucking boys. Cuz you're gonna love our episode. Yeah. We, we just did a fucking Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cuz we just did a wild fucking episode, and because you're a valuable $25 Matreon member, Patreon member non toot, we just did a wild episode wild. on James Armistead Lafayette who was a colonial okay. or Revolutionary War war hero, American war hero, who was a black kid who helped spy on the British and take down the British Empire and get, give us our freedom from the British Empire. So you're going to fucking love that episode. Hell yeah, man. I'm down for snatching all crippers and drinking all they tea, bro. <laughs> Absolutely, cuz. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yo. Justin Washington, you're a good fucking kid. You're a good American kid. Yeah. Yeah. Are you stationed out there? You living out there now? He said he's stationed out there. You're stationed out there. Have you you traveled around the world? Have you seen a lot? Because I know a lot of when you're in the military, sometimes you get stationed in different places. Um, Yeah, I have traveled not all over the world, though, but I have traveled um, to the the Mediterranean and also uh, to the uh, the Gulf where uh, Zach Isis and and me. And then, you know what I'm saying, drinking Mad Tiger beers and all that shit. Yeah, and thank God that place is in fucking ruins right now. When you were in the Mediterranean, did you bang out any Greek girls? Hell no. I didn't even get a chance to go to Greece. Damn it. Wow, (laughs) bastards. Let me ask you a question now, because it just... just Next time, bang one out. Just by the sound of it, Granite Falls, Washington, sounds like a place that's got a lot of (laughs) weights. Is that yes, true? It is, yes. Yeah, it's mostly white. So, you, you're surrounded by snow out there. Yeah. Yes, I am. Figuratively and literally right now. Yeah. All right, brother. Well, listen, man. We just want to call and thank you for being a valuable member of the, uh, of the Matreon and the Patreon and the Patriarch uh, and the Matriarchy. So, and you're part of the cackle. Mm-hmm. You're fucking one of the wild kids, part of the cackle. And uh, we're going to call you every single month. And we just really appreciate the support, truly. Thank you, brother. Hey, I- Hey, look, listen, I appreciate mixtape. you guys and what y'all doing and everything. And also, uh, I just want to let y'all know I have been slanging my Jack Johnson out here, so I have been keeping it uh, alive out this week. Yeah, Slanging the Jack Johnson. Yeah, cousin, make no mistake, you got a nice piece. We just fucking know you got a nice, <laughs> big piece. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I got that industrial glue gun, man. Yeah. Absolutely got that industrial glue gun. Yeah, hey, Bert. Um, we appreciate it, brother. Thank you so much. We'll call you next month. We'll speak to you next month. Thank you for no your worries. service. That's good kid. Good, great let's, kid. Let's get in the last uh, new one. Yep. Taylor Pepin. Taylor Pepin, right. And then yeah. we'll try to call Lisa Johnson. Yeah. 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 But we'll do Taylor Pepin and Lisa Johnson. What did he say? He's slinging his Jack Johnson? Slinging his Jack Johnson. I mean, his piece. Peace. Yeah. Nice. Because I think the Jack Johnson episode is a hit. It's a hit. I think people like in Jack Johnson because he was an interesting fucking kid. Yeah, and our Patreon just keeps moving up. We just got another 30 bucks. Yeah. Taylor Pepin. Make no mistake, we're going to have to renegotiate with some people. People are going to get cut. Yeah. Hello? Hey, Taylor Pepin. What's up? This is Chris Stefano and Giannis Pappas from the History Hyenas. How you doing? You sound like a piece. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Thank you. What are you doing? I'm just at work right now. Oh, yeah. That- Where do you work? Oh, my gosh. Thank you. Uh... <laughs> I work in Boston. Oh, in Boston? So that's close enough. Do you want to be my date to Giannis Papas' wedding? Oh, my gosh. Yes, I do. I don't think my boyfriend would like it, but I would love to be. Oh, okay. That. So forget it. Yeah. That would be great if fucking <laughs> Chris got beat up for asking you to the wedding. Yeah. That's what he deserves because he's a <laughs> dumb fucking kid. I'm a dumb kid. Now, Taylor, we just want to say thank you. We want to call you. We want to fucking get to know a little bit about you. So make so let's let's start off with the question that's been on everybody's mind. Is your boyfriend we? <laughs> <laughs> kidding we're just kidding but yes. oh it's okay, okay well that's fine oh there you go that was Giannis farting into the mic um no that was yeah, <laughs> yeah. let me ask you this are you from boston do you have a fucking accent well i'm originally from maine uh, wow even even more north i mean can you get more white yeah. than maine no yeah it's, When's the no. f- how old were you when you saw your first caribou 
<laughs> How old were you when you saw your first person who wasn't white? I, I was pretty young. Yeah, right. okay. You know, I didn't meet my first Jewish person until I was 23 years old. Yeah, and he lives in New York City, which is... That's wild, right? Yeah. That is a little wild. How long have you been dating your boyfriend? Um, for five years. Oh, wow, yeah, so that's it's getting serious. close. You yeah. may be getting... You may be somebody's wife soon. You might be someone's wife! I don't think so. Does he uh, listen? He's pretty young. Well, he better fuck... He better fuck... He, oh, you guys are pretty young? young How old kids. are you? 23. Oh, yeah. You got does, time. You got time. Does he listen to our potty yeah. wadi as well, or is it just you? Um, it's just, well, my friend Jackie and I actually love it. She actually introduced me to it, so shout out to her. Shout, shout out, out to like, Jackie. Jackie, we, <laughs> Jackie, yeah, that Jackie, what Jackie just did was she she, she impregnated another hyena and she spread it. Thank yeah. you, Jackie. Thank you for spreading the pseudo penises around. I, well, I'm going to be in Boston in April, so I hope you come see me. At Laugh. I'm going to be there at Laugh Boston. Yes. I'm going to be there at Laugh Boston. Yeah. What do you do? Yo. What do you do, Jackie? I'm Taylor. Ta this is I'm Taylor. 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 Sorry, Taylor. My friend is Jackie. Yeah. Jack Taylor. I'm sorry, Taylor. Yeah, Jackie's my friend. I'm a civil engineer. Wow. Because we got some we got smart, smart fucking kids. kids. We just got off the phone with somebody else who was an engineer. Yeah. We got smart people listening to us, and that's weird because we're dumb fucking kids. We're dumb kids. fucking kids. But you enjoying the podcast <laughs> so far? What, what did you say? You're enjoying the podcast so far? Oh my gosh, yes, I love it. I listen to it like all the time. Chris, well, let's be honest. Uh, yeah. If you were gonna put, if you were gonna think of the five most whitest names, is there any way Taylor's not on that list? The five most whitest names I can think of would be I'll go, I'll go, girl, boy, girl, boy, I'll go, yeah. girl, I'll go, th uh, three girl name, two boys names. The whitest names I can think of are Taylor, Samantha, and Jessica. And the whitest boy names I could think of would be Bradley and Adolf. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Listen, Mrs. Pepin, thank you so much for being part of uh, the matriarchy and being part of the cackle. We really, truly, like really seriously, really, really, really thank you for your support. Honestly, thank you. You're welcome. All right, babe. We're going to call you every single month. As long as you're paying $25, you're going to be my boo-boo baby thing, and we're going to call you every month. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Bye. 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 Love you. Bye. Love you, Taylor. Bye. Taylor sounds Taylor's like a... Pop, 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 oh, I hope her boyfriend doesn't listen to the episode. Yeah. Right, but we got some smart kids listening. Some smart kids. We're going to call Lisa Johnson right now. I hope Lisa Johnson picks up. I'm going to get horned up. Because the funny thing is Lisa Johnson is hilarious on She's our... She's one of our funniest... Pay she I mean, really is. Did she write anything recently? She did. She, she did. She talks in our voice. Yeah. People People are really writing a lot on the Patreon Our black kid fans love to talk in our voice. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Uh, Johnny D just posted a picture of you, Brooklyn Diocese names and priests who sexually abuse children. Hello? What happened to Lisa? She hung up. Let's try calling. Let's try again. Yeah. yeah. She's probably nervous now because she's finally talking to Chrissy D. Here she goes, Lisa Johnson. She says, missed fucking call. I'm so pissed that I missed the boy's call. I was too busy fisting Clay Anthony and sticking a toy dinosaur up Chris the teacher's glue hole. Hello? Hey, yeah! Lisa! Yeah! Yes, it's yes. Chris DiStefano and Giannis Pavis from the Australians. You are my future wife. What's up, babe? <laughs> hey. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Lisa. What's le going on? Lisa Johnson, let me just tell you You are something. a fucking all-star. You are an all-star. You're probably one of our funniest members of the matriarchy. I mean, the shit that you write is just so 10 out of 10 funny, and it doesn't hurt that you are a pa 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 Holy shit. Oh my gosh. Yeah. The first thing I hear when you guys, when I picked up was sexually abused children. <laughs> and that's, that's when you hung up. up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were yeah. actually. Like, no caller ID. Second of all, abused children. Yeah, definitely going to pick up. Yeah. 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 We just, well, we, yeah. Uh, we were actually just reading a post on the Patreon page from Johnny D. That po you'll see it. He posted a picture of Chris, and he says, Brooklyn Di Diocese names eight priests who sexually abuse children, and it's a picture of Steel Pipe Chrissy. Yeah. You guys are hilarious on the Patreon page, especially you. You're always saying funny stuff, and Chris wants to marry you now. Yeah, where do you live, Lisa? What state? <laughs> I live in Atlanta. Atlanta do you want to come? Do you want to be my date to Giannis Papas' wedding? Sure, why not? Let's go for it. Let's do you it. have a boyfriend? Let's just... 
I do have a fiance, but Damn I mean, it. Wow. it is what it is. So you you have a fiance, <laughs> so that means in just a couple of months you're gonna be somebody's wife. <laughs> Hey, hashtag sister wives. Yeah. There you go. You yeah. heard what she said, though. She said, yeah, it is what it is, though. It's what it is, Lisa. Well, they- it is <laughs> what it is. Yeah. Lisa, if you have two extra seats for that wedding in Atlanta, Yanni Poppy and Chrissy D want to come and be a part of that fucking beautiful day. And we're not even joking. If you, when you get married, invite us. We will come down for the Patreon. Yeah. Of course, absolutely. Hey, you, you got it. Yeah, well, at least well, at least come sure. to the church because make no mistake, a black wedding in Atlanta is a lot of fun, a lot of singing, a lot of dancing. That's going to be a fun time. It's a fun wedding. Yeah. Is oh your, yeah, open bar might be a little some little gay stuff going on, but hey, hey, hey. well, it is. Yeah, it's it what it is, is. right? Is your yeah. fiance is, is your fiance is he white, black, Chinese? What is he? He's black, but he's from New Jersey. So, oh, uh, he's close. Right? Yeah. Now, does he listen to the potty waddy, or is it just you? No, just me. Okay. I try to get him on it for a little bit, but... There's yeah. a lot of gay shit maybe, in there. Maybe secretly, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. the thing is... Because thi- Chrissy always talks about how he wants to blow guys in Houston. Yeah, and he probably, you know, <laughs> I've mentioned your name about a hundred times about how, how I just am in love with you, and he probably pissed off, and the last person you want to piss off is a black guy from New Jersey. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah, he's, he's low key with his jealousy. So, yeah, okay. maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Now, what do you do for work, Lisa? <laughs> I'm a marketing manager for a B2B company, and we target like auto dealerships and stuff like that. So, I have a serious job. Nice. <laughs> and are you from Atlanta? <laughs> No, I'm from California. Wow. Yeah. Nobody nobody who lives yeah. in, very few people in Atlanta are from Atlanta. Atlanta's become one of those hot cities that people are moving to. I love Atlanta. Atlanta's a great city. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it's cheap as hell. So it's like, yeah, I'm just going to go where my money can stretch the farthest, right? So, well, because do you want to move to yeah. Atlanta? I want to move to Atlanta, and I just want Lisa Johnson's marriage to crumble. Because... <laughs> I just want to. Well, she even she has a cackle laugh. She does have a cackle. Lisa, laugh. you are, yeah, yeah. You're just a ten out of ten, and we just seriously want to thank you so much for being one of the most valuable members of the matriarchy and one and one of the leaders of the cackle. So you're a valuable twenty five dollar member. We're going to call you each and every month, and I'm so fucking happy that we finally got to hear your voice. Because make no mistake, I dream about you, and there's been a couple of times where I've tugged my Jack Johnson to you. <laughs> Well, yeah. just make sure you clean your stuff up with a witch hazel, right? Yeah! yeah. That's, all I, that's all I have. Lisa Johnson, <laughs> you're the best. Truly the best. She is a witty, yeah. witty. She, I, I think she's the love president her. of the matriarchy right Raphael now. Raphael DeLuca might have to move over. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you so much, Lisa. We really hope you have a great rest of the day, and we really appreciate you talking to us. No problem. Thanks for calling. Talk to you guys soon. All Bye. Right. Love you. Bye. God, Lisa Johnson is the best. Lisa Johnson, number I fucking love Lisa Johnson. Yeah, because I took a big swing with the Jack Johnson joke, and she fucking she hit, she put the cherry on top. She did. Said clean it up with witch, witch hazel. hazel, and she said I had to move the vegetables tonight. Her cut. She goes, Zach's genie god. Thank you for distracting your muzzy child with his alphabet cuck fingers instead of posting my number on the podcast. I guess I should quit my job and be an IG thought. I mean blogger, so I can be available all day. Lisa Johnson, we fucking love you. Should I? Yeah, I stopped the. Re-